Okay, so um, welcome to class, guys. Today we're talking about section um, 5.4, and it's all about what's called polynomial um, long division. And um, this is an incredibly important topic for those students that are planning to go on to calculus. It will certainly show up um, again. Uh, on the other hand, it's going to be sort of a dry uh, lecture today because we're just going to be focused on one and only one thing. There's only one learning objective for today. And um, that learning objective is to learn how to apply this process of long division. So it's an algorithm, and we're going to apply long division for polynomials. The first thing that I'm going to do here in class is just remind you about long division back from like third grade. Right? So back in elementary school, you learned this whole process of like how to divide two numbers, and you've got a remainder at the end. So I'm going to remind you of that, and then we'll see how that fits into um, long division for polynomials. Um, and then I'm just going to go through a lot of examples. There's a how-to in the uh, textbook if you want it like laid down step by step, but I thought it was just so complicated that it's not really worth reading the how-to. Instead, you're better off just doing several examples and then sort of picking up the algorithm from the example, because it's really similar to what you did back in um, elementary school. Okay, so that is our one um, learning objective for today. And again, like I said, I'm just going to start out with a question back from grade school. Let's say you were trying to take the number 178 and you wanted to divide it by three. Okay? You wanted to divide it by three. Let's say maybe you're like a teacher and you have 178 students. You want to put them in three groups. How many people need to be in each group, right? I mean, that's, that's sort of what we're asking here. And um, back in elementary school, you would have said, oh, okay, we'll take 178 and, well, divide it by 3. And so you'd have this sort of uh, notation, right? This is that division bar. It's not a square root. It's a division bar. And you'd go through the process. So I'm going to give you guys a few moments to remind yourself of that process and let you go through the algorithm, right? So go through this whole process, figure out what the remainder is, and then I'll walk you through it as well, okay? So take a few moments to do that. Um, and I should also mention that those students that didn't do so hot on the midterm, um, it's going to be important for you guys to start um, sort of showing up in class and answering questions, right? Um, so that would be an excellent idea. Okay, so Jordan um, already wrote it out in uh, the old school style of throwing in the remainder there. I really like that. So we'll talk about how to write our answers as well because there's going to be some uh, special format and some special vocabulary associated with it. Okay, and a lot of people are saying um, 59. And uh, remember, the answer, uh, 178 divided by 3, is not 59, right? It's almost 59. It's going to be like 59.333333 if you put it in the calculator. Right? And where does that point 3333 come from? Well, it comes from the remainder, so we'll talk about that. But um, just give me a thumbs up if you've gone through it and you've had enough time to, to try this out, and then we'll go. So again, if, if you've um, gone through the long division and you reminded yourself, yeah, okay, here we go. I see some people giving me the thumbs up now. Okay, excellent. So how do we do the long division? Let me just remind you if it's been a while since you've done this or maybe you don't remember all the details. Um, what you do is you take the numbers from left to right, right? So you start out um, at this one and you ask yourself, how many times can um, the divisor, this three is called the divisor, the thing on the bottom of the fraction, uh, how many times does 3 go into 1? And you say, ah, it doesn't, right? 1 is, is too small. So you say, okay, well, I need to include the next digit over. So 17, right? And then you focus just on these two. This is bigger than 3. So 3 will go into 17. And the question is, how many times, right? So what do I need to write on top of the 17, uh, on top of the 7, I guess, if we're performing this algorithm? Yeah, so we would put a 5 there. And the reason why is that 3 goes into 17 five times, right? It doesn't go into it exactly, right? 3 is not a divisor of 17, but um, 3 times 5 is 15. And so it's almost this 17. It's just off by 2. Okay, and then what we do is we uh, go through this process. And what number do we write here? What should we get at this point? 2, right? So we take this number on the top and we subtract off how many times three went into that number. And in this case, we're left over with two. Okay, and um, we don't stop here at two. What should we do now, right? What should, what should go next to the two? 
to eight, right? So now we drop down to eight. And on all of these things, I'm just reminding you of all these little steps because when we do polynomial long division, all of these things will be there as well, right? Um, okay, so we bring down the eight and we have 28. And then we repeat the entire process again, but instead of 178, we just focus on 28 now. And the goal is that we go like from 178 to something smaller and then at the next step, something smaller and something smaller until we get down to some number which is smaller than three, and we call that the remainder. Okay, so now how many times does three go into 28? What number should I put up here? Nine. Okay, and nine times three, that's 27. And then I subtract again and I get one. And I notice stop here um, because one is smaller than three, and I can't bring anything down. Now, if you're using decimals, you could put like a 0, .0 and then bring down a zero and then continue the whole process, right? And you get 59.33333 forever. But here, I'm asking you to just stop at the remainder like you would back in elementary school. Okay, now try to write that out in terms of an equation, right? So this whole process means something. It means that 178 divided by 3 is equal to something. So try to write it down, and then um, I'm going to put it down as well. And... Um, I mean, I know a lot of you wrote it down as 59 remainder 1, but we're going to want to be a little more sophisticated than that in this case, right? So write it out without putting an R1. What does it mean? Okay. And let's try to write it as a fraction instead of a decimal as well. So um, let me show you what it means, right? So you take... And then I'm going to use some terminology, and we'll, we'll hear it again and again and again, because Infinity uses this terminology as well. This is called the dividend. This is called the divisor. And if I take the dividend and divide it by the divisor, my answer is going to be this number that I got on the top, which is called the quotient, plus a little bit extra, right? Because it's not actually equal to 59. Like everybody's pointing out, it's 59.33. Um, it's going to be 59 plus the remainder divided by that divisor. How much more is it off from 59? Well, it's just one-third, the remainder divided by um, the divisor, okay? And um, if we multiply both sides by three, we can write it this way as well. And so the book will um, think about things like this as well. So multiply both sides by three. This side, you just get 178. Here, you're going to get 59 times three. And then here, three times one-third, that's going to be plus one. So this is a way to write the same equation here, just without any fraction. Okay. And my point is just that when you do this, what this algorithm is telling you is this information here. Okay. And we're going to be interested in doing this same setup, but instead of numbers here, we're going to put polynomials. And um, it shouldn't be too surprising because it turns out that, for example, this number here, we can really sort of think about it as being a polynomial in disguise, right? And let me show you how that works. So there's hundreds, so it's a hundred, and then there's uh, the tens, and there's seven of them, so that's 70, and then there's the one plus eight. So you can think about it like this, and then a hundred is 10 squared, 70 is seven times 10 to the power of one, and eight is the same thing as eight times 10 to the power of zero. Um, anything to the power of zero is just one. So I'm going to leave that one off. And then what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to let x be equal to 10. And I'm going to rewrite this in terms of a variable. And what this equation is, is x squared plus 7x plus 8. So there really is sort of a polynomial here. It's just that you fixed x to be 10. And what we're going to want to do is this whole process, but just with an arbitrary x. And um, what this does is it moves us out of what's called base 10, and into whatever base system we would like, okay? So let's go through that and um, see how we can replace this whole picture here, but now it's just polynomials, okay? Um, but before I do that, let me just remind you of what I just said again. So here's that algorithm. We divided 178 by 3, went through the whole process, got a quotient of 59 and a remainder of 1. And then again, what I wrote on the board was, what this means is that the dividend the 178 is equal to the divisor, that was the 3, times your answer, which we uh, call the quotient, plus that extra remainder, right? So you would write out your answer, it means this. 
And here they're just checking the work. If you multiply this stuff out on the other side, you can see that 178 indeed is equal to 178. This whole process has a name. It's called the division algorithm. And again, what we're after here is trying to apply the division algorithm to um, polynomials as opposed to just numbers, like you did back in elementary school. And you'll notice that up here again, we see this um, notation that you might have had back in elementary school, a 59 remainder one, or a mixed fraction of 59 and one third. Um, we're not gonna really write anything down like that. But that's just a reminder of what we just did. And um, again, we're gonna now sort of switch this over to polynomials. So here's a typical example of what you might see. Take um, the polynomial 2x cubed uh, minus 3x squared plus 4x plus 5 and divide it by x plus 2. And um, I'm not even going to go through the how-to. I'm instead just going to go through this algorithm. I'm going to work sort of really slowly for these first couple of ones. And then hopefully um, you guys will sort of see the pattern and pick it up from there. Okay. If you're the kind of person that really likes these how-to sort of things, um, I'll just sort of direct you to the book and you can check out that how-to. But it's like nine steps and I, I think it makes it a little more confusing than it really is. Okay, so what we want to be doing in this case uh, is thinking about what we need to put up here in the quotient uh, in order to sort of do the same sort of canceling out that we saw in the previous example. But now instead of a number, it's this 2x. Um, cubed here. So let me go ahead and rewrite this on my board and then we'll go from there. Okay, so we have that x plus 2 is our divisor and then again the dividend is this 2x cubed uh, minus 3x squared uh, plus 4x plus 5. And you're hearing me use these words dividend, divisor, quotient just because not so much because I think they're really important but because infinity will ask you about these various things, right? So the terminology is important here in, in how you answer those questions. Okay, so let's jump over to the board. This is the question. And um, what we're gonna ask ourselves is basically how many times does x plus two go into this two x cubed? And what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna put some number here, right? Such that when we subtract these, we get a zero on that first term, okay? So, um, Again, what that means is that we're going to want a 2x cubed here, okay? Now, what do I need to multiply x plus 2 by in order to get a 2x cubed, right? So that's the question. What do I need to multiply this um, divid or divisor by in order to get this leading coefficient of 2x cubed? Okay, and several students are um, saying the right answer. It's 2x squared, right? So I need a 2x squared. Um, up here on the top, and I'm going to put it over the x squared term because that's our x squared. So I'm going to put 2x squared here. Um, it's best practice to put whatever, sort of like if it's an x squared, you put it over the x squared term. If you're going to put something like an x, you put it over the x term and so on and so forth, right? So here I'm going to put that 2x squared over the 3x squared term, and that's going to be part of our quotient. And the reason, again, that I'm picking 2x squared is that 2x squared times this leading coefficient of x here will then give me 2x cubed. Now, it's not just x on its own, there's this plus 2. So what is 2 times 2x squared? Well, it's going to be 4x squared, okay? So you pick your um, piece of the quotient, you multiply by the divisor, and you put it underneath. And this is exactly the same steps that you did when you were asking yourself, how many times does it go into that um, number, right? Um, the only difference now is that you're trying to match up the leading coefficient. Now, I'm going to show you something that I do to make things easier for me. Um, and I don't think the book does it, but uh, I'm going to do it here. I'm going to put this in parentheses, the entire thing, and then I'm going to put a minus sign on the outside. Because our next step is to subtract these two, just like we did back in long division. And if we set things up correctly, the leading terms will match, and you'll get a zero here. Um, I could write a zero there, but usually when you're doing the algorithm, the division algorithm, um, you just leave this term off, right? So you subtract 2x cubed minus 2x cubed, and you get zero. Now, again, this is going to be really tricky. If I take 3x squared and I subtract 4x squared, what should I get here? And you should be really careful about this because um, several students in my last class sort of messed it up. I see a couple students 
um, chiming in in the uh, the chat here. Um, do you guys agree or disagree? What should we get? Is it negative seven, negative seven x, negative seven x squared? Um, and again, I'm gonna let you guys respond here just so I'm not jumping the gun and telling you all the details. Because again, this is really important. We're taking negative three x squared and we're subtracting the four x squared. And it's incredibly important that the x squareds match up, right? That this is an x squared and this is an x squared. And because they're x squared, this one's gonna have an x squared. Now all we have to do is subtract the two coefficients and negative three minus four is indeed negative seven. So here, when we subtract, you get a negative seven x squared. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You pick this number up, up here so that the leading coefficients cancel each other out. And then that forces this number to be something, right? And now we're going to focus on this new piece. And um, what we'll do is we'll take this 4x and just bring it down, like we did previously with long division. So now I'm bringing this 4x down. And then we just repeat the whole process again. So this is why it's called an algorithm, right? We just keep repeating the same step and then repeating the same step and repeating the same step. And um, the key here is that we went from a cubic, right, to a degree three down to a degree two. So each step that we do this, the degree um, should drop down um, at least by one, possibly more depending on the setup. But in this case, it should drop down by one. And we repeat the whole process now with this being the new dividend, right? So now we ask ourselves, what do I need to multiply x plus two by in order to get a leading term of negative seven x squared? So what's the next term? Yeah, so everybody's seeing it's a minus seven x. And I should put that term over the term that's an x, right? So here's our 4x, so I'm gonna put a minus seven x right over that term uh, with x's. Um, if x was 10, this would be like the thousands, the hundreds, the tens, and the ones, right? So that's why I'm writing them over um, those positions, the same way that we did back in that algorithm. Okay, so now I've got this negative 7x and I multiply by this, and indeed I do get negative 7x squared. That was the goal, right? That's why I picked this, so that when I multiply the leading terms, I get them matching up. However, there's this extra 2 here, so what should I put right here underneath that 4x? Um, yeah, it's going to be 2 times the negative 7x, so minus 14x. And again, this is really an important step, right? And this is the part I think that students really mess up the most is the subtraction part. And you have to be really careful with this algorithm because if you mess up just one of these subtractions, it's going to propagate through. And if you want to redo the problem, you're going to have to start the whole thing basically over again. So you need to be really careful about this subtraction step. It's the, the step that students can really mess up the most. Um, we set it up correctly so that this cancels with this. Negative 7 minus negative 7. Well, that's negative 7 plus 7, so this is just going to go away. And what we want to focus on now is this, 4x minus negative 14. So what should we get here? Okay, so Jordan, Isha, okay, everybody's um, chiming in with 18. And um, be a bit careful. I, I saw somebody here put the negative 10. It's, it's sort of tempting to add these together, right? Um, if I add these together, then I get negative 10. But that's not what it's asking us to do. It's asking us to take 4 and subtract negative 14. And a negative times a negative is a positive. So this makes it a positive 14. And here we'll get an 18x. Okay, so um, here's this 5, and I'm going to bring down the 5. And at each stage, you should be asking yourself, just like back in the regular division algorithm for numbers, should I stop? Am I done with this process? And the way that you'll know, so previously you just sort of like waited until the number was smaller than what you were dividing by. Here, the way that you'll know is you'll look at the degree of the polynomial. So this is now a degree one, and this is also a degree one, and we, sh we shouldn't stop until the degree of this thing is smaller than the thing we're dividing by. Um, in other words, we have to be smaller than a degree one polynomial. Um, in this case, that's going to be a number. But you should stop once you get to something that has a degree smaller than this. Okay, so what do I need to put above my five? Yeah, it's going to be 18. Um, so there we've got that 18, and then we multiply this whole thing, so we get 18x plus um, 2 times 18, which is 36. And again, I'm going to put in parentheses here in this minus sign just to indicate to me that I'm subtracting, right? And again, I'm going to tell you that 
Even if you understand the algorithm really well, it's very easy to mess up this step on the algorithm, right? So make sure that you're doing these subtractions carefully. Otherwise, it's going to turn into a big mess. Um, but you have to repeat the whole thing. Okay, so what do I get finally in this bottom um, portion over here? Minus 31. So 5 minus 36 is minus 31. And here we notice stop, okay? So we're going to stop at this point. And we know to stop because the degree of this new dividend is smaller than the degree of the thing you were dividing by. Bam. Um, so we're done. So this is the process of long division. And what we're going to now do is write down what it means, right? So what does this actually mean in terms of a fraction? Well, it means if we take this dividend, right, this big guy here, this 2x cubed minus 3x squared, plus 4x plus 5, and we were to divide it by this divisor, the x plus 2, well, we would get almost the quotient, 2x squared minus 7x plus 18, but not quite. There's still a little bit off, and we're off by the remainder, right? So we'll put plus the remainder, which is negative 31, and then here we just divide by the divisor again, so x plus 2. And um, this would be the meaning of this long division, right? So when you've gone through this long division here, um, basically what you've done is you've proven um, that this equality is true, okay? And this information gives you a lot of information about the graph of this rational function over here. Um, we're not going to be too interested right now in what it means or um, sort of what we can extract from this information, but when you get to calculus for sure, um, this will be a much nicer expression to deal with than this over here. Like, just as an example, we can now see what the end behavior would be, because when x is really big, um, these three terms really don't matter, and this thing looks like a 2x squared. So if you were to zoom out really far on this graph, it would look like a 2x squared, for example. So there's lots of information here um, that we can get from this. Um, you need to be careful as well, because in infinity, um, they'll write this also in terms of something that's not a fraction. So they'll multiply both sides of this expression by x plus 2. So um, let me show you what that looks like here. And um, I can do it here and um, that's any sort of color coded for you. So again, um, I'm multiplying both sides by the x plus 2. And on the left hand side, I'll just get that dividend. So that term under here is called the dividend. And then um, it's going to be the quotient. That's that term we would have got up here on the top. And then um, times the divisor, right? The divisor is the thing that we're dividing by. And then finally over here, we get this minus 31. And we call that the remainder. So dividend, divisor, quotient, remainder. And again, I'm really bringing this up more because Affinity will ask you specifically about these certain terms, right? So we really need to be careful about um, naming them so that when Affinity works the problem out, and again, it's the same thing that we wrote down over here. Let me just point it out again. All we did is multiply both sides by x plus 2. So this guy cancels the x plus 2, this guy cancels the x plus 2, and then this one becomes that whole expression becomes x plus 2. Okay. So that's a good example of the process of long division. We just want to match up those leading terms and then just keep going until we get down to some um, polynomial that has a degree smaller than the thing we're dividing by. In this case, we were dividing by x plus 2. Um, and like I said, I think it's best to just go through a few examples with this sort of thing. Um, there's one thing that I haven't quite told you about yet. It's um, related to the setup of the problem. And the very last question that we do today um, will be related to this setup. So um, there's one extra piece. But before we get into some of the details on the setup, let's just do another one. And um, we're going to do long division here uh, to take 5x squared plus 3x minus 2 and divide it by x plus 1. And before I go anywhere um, with this problem, I'm going to give you a few moments to try and write it down in terms of some sort of division symbol. Okay? So write what goes under here, what's the dividend, and write what goes on the outside, what's the divisor. Okay? So um, you don't have to put that in the chat, but I'm just going to give you guys a couple moments to try that on your own. And as soon as you, you do it, just give me a thumbs up, and then I'll show you um, the correct way to do it. Okay. 
Um, one easy way to sort of see which is the dividend and which is the divisor is that the divisor is generally going to have, I guess I can say generally, it's going to have um, a degree that's smaller than um, the dividend. So here uh, on the outside, it should have been the x plus 1. Okay? And then underneath the, the radical there, um, that dividend is 5x squared plus 3x minus 2. Okay? So they're really just asking us to do this. Take 5x squared plus 3x minus 2 and divide it by x plus 1. Okay, and um, again, this one's a little bit easier than the last one because we're just dealing with x squared. We need to ask ourselves, what do we need to multiply the leading term here, which is x, um, by in order to get this leading term of 5x squared? Okay, and everybody is, I think, starting to see what it is, so I'll, I'll start maybe moving a little bit faster with some of these. But here we would get 5x, and we want to put it over the 3x term because these are the x terms, right? You have to line everything up. Um, you, now, you don't necessarily have to line things up, but if you don't do this, um, you can sort of run into some just uh, mistakes by, like, typo mistakes, right? It's an easy, to, easy problem to run into. Okay, so we put the 5x there, and the purpose of that is that we get 5x squared when we multiply by the x. Okay, but what should I put under the 3x? It should be 5x, right, because 1 times 5x is 5x. And then again, I'm going to put parentheses here and the subtraction sign out on the outside. Um, and it, that's really just for me, right, because I know this is the hardest step. You don't have to actually do that, and I think in the textbook, I don't think they write it out that way. But it just helps me remember that I'm subtracting. So here we get 0. And what should we get here? Okay, great. Everybody is sort of seeing this process of the negative. So we get 3 minus 5, right? The x's are just x's. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Um, and then we bring down that negative 2, which is over here, and we see that we can't stop yet because the degree of this is the same as the degree of that. So we need to continue, right? It's tempting to maybe just try and stop here, but we need to keep going. Now we ask ourselves, how many times does x plus 1 go into this negative 2x minus 2? What are we going to put above the negative 2, in other words? And everybody can see it's, it's negative 2, right? So this negative 2 multiplied by that x to give you negative 2x. And then this negative 2 multiplied by this 1 to give you minus 2. Okay, and then now we can subtract this guy. This is negative 2x minus negative 2x. So that's going to be 0. We don't write it there. And then what do we get um, for this piece? Negative 2 minus negative 2. Yeah, yeah. It's 0, right? Because a negative times a negative is a positive, and here we get 0. And we know to stop here, and we know that the remainder is 0. Okay? And um, this is going to be really important um, in terms of answering some of the questions in infinity, because when the remainder is 0, it means something um, pretty important. Okay? It's going to get us back to our um, relationship to factor. So let me go ahead and write this down in the format that we've been um, looking at. Right? So this means that 5x squared plus 3x minus 2, that's the dividend, divided by the divisor, which was x plus 1, is equal to the quotient 5x minus 2, and then plus the remainder 0 divided by the divisor, x plus 1. And it's really cool. Whenever the remainder is 0, this whole term just disappears, right? So 0 divided by x plus 1 is still 0, and adding 0 to anything just gives us back this. And now I'm going to move it into the other format that we had before by multiplying this x plus 1 to the other side. And what we get is 5x squared plus 3x minus 2 is equal to 5x minus 2 times x plus 1. And what you should be noticing here is that we've seen sort of an alternative method for factoring the polynomial like this. Like maybe you were asked um, at some point or even in the future on a final exam to factor this guy, and maybe you didn't see what the terms were, but you thought, okay, well, maybe x plus 1 is a factor because I can see that when I plug in negative 1 into this sort of thing, I get a 0. Um, and what you can do is just go through and plug it into long division, divide by the x plus 1, and you'll get the other piece of the factor. So this x plus 1 will be a factor of the dividend precisely when the remainder is 0. Okay? So when the remainder is 0, you're getting information about factoring. When the remainder is not 0, it doesn't factor in the way that you would like.
Okay. So, um, yeah, I agree, Angelique. It's a pretty awesome, uh, awesome setup here, right? And so we're sort of seeing this connection between the long division and the factor, right? And so you can see how this is really important for finding zeros of polynomials as well. Okay, so let's go through and do this one. And now we're going to have to contend with the 3 in front of the x. All of the previous examples were just dividing by like x plus 2 or x minus 3 or something. Now we have to deal with that 3x. Um, and we've got this pretty nasty looking um, degree 3 polynomial. And we'll ask ourselves, uh, for example, is 3x minus 2 a factor of this polynomial? And if we go through the whole division process and we find a remainder of 0, then it is a factor. And if we were find a remainder of anything other than zero, it's not. So this is a good way to determine that question as well. Okay, I'm going to give everybody a moment to set it up. And then when um, you're done with that sort of thing, um, give me a thumbs up and we'll go from there. Now just, and just by the setup, I just mean, you know, identifying what's the dividend and the divisor. And I know those terms are sort of really bad, right? It, like it's easy to confuse dividend, divisor, dividend, divisor. But, you know, it's a good idea to get used to it because Infinity is very precise about what they're asking you for. Okay. So, let's set this one up. Um, here we're dividing by 3x minus 2. So that's our divisor. And then um, here for the dividend, we've got 6x cubed plus 11x squared minus 31x and plus 15. Okay, so that's the setup here. That's all they're asking us to do. And I want to point out something um, before we get too far ahead of ourselves and do the algorithm. With the setup, I mean, it looks like it's just a matter of identifying what the dividend is and what the divisor is. But sometimes the dividend will have to sort of modify a little bit, okay? Um, and, for example, if we didn't have an x squared term in the setup, we would normally write that as like 6x cubed minus 31x plus 15. Um, but when we're doing long division, we'd have to add that term in as a 0x squared. And I'll do one of those at the very end, right? But we have to make sure that there's always an x cubed, an x squared, an x term, and then a term without x's. And we need to put in zeros in order for everything to match up. In this case, that's not happening, but I want you to be aware of that, that um, it's not always as simple as just writing it down like this. And if you don't include those zeros, we'll really mess up your, your algorithm. Okay. So again, here's our 6x cubed. We're trying to match up the leading coefficients. And now we have to contend with the 3. So what do I need to multiply 3x by in order to get a 6x cubed? Okay, great. Everybody's really on track here. And notice it's an x squared term. Why is it an x squared term? Because x times x squared is going to give you the x cubed. So we need to put it over the 11x squared term. Now, um, we're going to have to put a 2 there. Why a 2? Because 2 times the 3 gives us the 6x cubed. Um, but now, we still have to uh, contend with the negative 2 because it's not just 3x on its own. It's the minus 2. So what goes underneath this 11x squared? Yeah, so we take this number and we multiply it by the negative 2. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. And then there's just the x squared. And we subtract. Okay, so again, these two are matching up, so we don't write anything there. And then these guys here are going to take 11 minus um, 6. Sorry, I'm following my notes here. We're going to take 11 and subtract um, negative 4, right? What are we going to get there? Okay, and everybody in this chat is, is throwing in the 15, right? Because, again, a negative times a negative is a positive, and here uh, 11 minus a negative 4 would be 11 plus 4. And then the x squared is just x squared. Okay, and we ask ourselves, um, do we need to bring something down? The answer is yes, that minus 31x. And then we ask ourselves, do we stop? And the answer is no, because this degree is still bigger than... Um, the 3x minus 2. Okay, so now, again, we repeat the process. What do we need to multiply the 3x by in order to... Okay, and people, I think, are following along in the chat. So maybe we can start moving a little faster. So here we're going to need to put a 5x, right? Because 
3x times 5x is going to give us 15x squared. Uh, but then we still need to take the negative 2 times the 5x, and that's going to give us a minus 10x. And again, you need to be really careful. We have to put the parentheses in the minus sign and subtract. Here we're going to get 0. What should we get here? Okay. Great. Everybody's saying minus 21. And that's, again, because the negative negative makes this a positive 10. Um, and so negative 31 minus negative 10 is the same thing as negative 31 plus 10, or negative 21. And then again, it's just x. This guy's disappeared. You should pack them off and you don't write it down. Do we ask ourselves again, do we stop? And we say, okay, the degree is 1 here, the degree is 1 here. Nope, we've got to keep going. And we still have something to bring down. So bring down that um, 15. And now, finally, what do we put um, up here? How are we going to get that negative 21? Okay, and um, it's minus 7. So minus 7 times 3x is going to give us minus 21. And then the x is coming from this x here. And then finally here we get uh, negative 7 times negative 2. So that's going to be plus 14. The negative times the negative um, is positive. And then we subtract. So we end up with a 1. Okay, because 15 minus 14 is just 1. And we notice stop at this point. Okay. And why are we going to stop? Well, we're going to stop because the degree of this is 0 and the degree of that is 1. So we've now gotten down to something whose degree is smaller than the divisor, and we stop. And we also know that, um, in fact, 3x minus 2 is not a factor of this guy because the remainder was not 0. Okay. Um, let's just take a moment one more time to write it all out um, and what it means in terms of an equation, because we'll do that to you in infinity. This means 6x cubed plus 11x squared minus 31x plus 15 divided by um, 3x minus 2 is equal to the quotient 2x squared plus 5x minus 7 plus the remainder, which was 1, divided by that divisor, 3x minus 2. So here is um, what that long division meant. Okay. And again, there's a second form of this where if you multiply both sides by the 3x minus 2, you can write it without any fractions at all. And um, sometimes in entity, they'll want you to write it in that form. Again, reminder here, dividend, divisor, quotient, remainder. Okay. So um, in infinity, they'll ask you things like this, right? And I wanted to point this one out um, specifically because if you read that first instruction, it says use synthetic division. And like I mentioned, it's not going to be one of our um, learning objectives. I'm just going to ask you to know how to do things um, using long division. And the main reason for that is that anything you can do with synthetic division, you can also do with long division. On the other hand, there's a video in the homework, right, uh, built into the question on synthetic division, where you can learn synthetic division if you'd like. Um, synthetic division is just a more compact way of writing down all of the information that you had in long division. So if you'd like to do it that way, you can. I won't mark you off. And um, on the final exam, there's never going to be a question that says use synthetic division specifically. Right? <coughs> okay. So um, again, write this one down as a quotient. And you'll notice that it's a little bit um, tricky here because it's asking you if x plus 4 is a factor. And really, they're just asking you, is the remainder 0 or not? If the remainder is 0, it is a factor, and you'll mark yes. If the remainder is not 0, then it's not a factor, and you'll mark no. So um, the remainder is another way to determine if um, the divisor is a factor. OK, so um, start the process of setting it up, and then we'll go through um, this one. And again, I'm going to move through this one a little bit more um, quickly than I did before. Um, again, if you're, you're having trouble with the dividend divisor thing, just remember um, the thing that goes underneath that division bar is the thing with the higher degree. And the thing that goes on the bottom is the one with the smaller degree. I'm sorry, not on the bottom, but um, to the left. Okay, so here we would put x plus 4, and then we would divide that into 2x cubed plus 12x squared uh, plus 13x. 
and then minus 12. Okay. So again, um, I think everybody's sort of following the process, so I'm not going to ask you to, to reply with um, your answers here. I'm just going to go through this a little bit quicker. Um, here we've got an x. We want to make sure that it's a 2x um, cubed. So we need an x squared term so that the x cubes match up. And then here, in order to make sure that we get a 2, we need a 2x squared there. Okay, so what does that mean? We get 2x cubed here, and then 4 times um, 2x squared is going to be plus 8x squared, and we have to subtract. The 2x cubes um, cancel each other out because we chose the uh, quotient that way. Um, but here, this one we have to sort of contend with, and if we take 12 minus 8, we're going to get 4, and then it's just the x squared. Again, we ask ourselves, should we stop? And the answer is no, because this degree is 2, and this degree is 1. We have to make sure until we get down to something that's smaller than degree 1. Um, so we bring down our 13 uh, x, and we do the whole process over again. So now we want to match up the uh, leading term with a 4x squared. And in order to get an x squared, we need to have an x term. And in order to get the 4 out in the front, we need a 4 there. So now we'll multiply the 4x times the x plus 4. And here we get 4x squared because we chose it that way. Um, but on the second piece, it's going to be 4 times 4, um, 4x, which is going to give you 16. 4 times 4 is 16. And then times x. And I subtract. And again, it's really easy to go through this too quickly. Right? If you know the algorithm, you, you want to go through it fast, and it's easy to mess up one of these subtractions. And remember, the error propagates. So if you have an error up here, you can't just like fix the number and then not change anything. You've got to go through the whole thing all over again. So you need to be really careful when you're doing these ones step by step. Okay, so these two cancel each other out. What do we get here? Just hopefully so I'm not moving too, too quickly for everybody. What should we get here? 13x minus 16x. Um, be careful, it's not just negative 3. Um, that's going to be the coefficient, but what should we have? Yeah, yeah, so we also need to include the x as well. And it's really important that you include the x's because we know that we shouldn't stop here because the degrees are still the same. This is degree 1, this is degree 1. We need to keep going. Um, the next term that we need is a minus 3, and that's so that when I multiply this x by minus 3, I get minus 3x. And then now we can see minus 3 times 4, well, that's minus 12. And we subtract. And what's our remainder? Zero. These ones cancel and these cancel. And so the answer to this question is yes. Um, x plus 4 is a factor. Uh, because, again, the remainder is zero. Okay. So let me just go back to the statement of the question one more time. Um, here for the remainder, you would put in zero. Um, here for the quotient, you would put in what you got on the top. And then to answer this question about whether or not it's a factor, it's just asking, um, is the remainder zero? So uh, in this case, we would say, yeah, indeed it is. OK, so we have a nice way of um, answering questions like this for this Um Two more questions, and then we're going to sort of finish up because we only have four minutes. Uh, here's a sort of a confusing one because it's not really asking you to perform long division. It's sort of asking you to go in reverse. Here, what they're telling you is that one of the factors of this polynomial is this x squared plus 2x plus 2. So one of the factors is this, okay, x squared plus 2x plus 2. And then we need to find what the other factor is. And the way you find the other factor is just to identify where the zero is at, right? So remember, if you set the factors equal to zero, um, then you can find the zeros to the polynomial. And here, this one's occurring at negative one. So if it's occurring at negative one, that means we have a factor of x plus one. And so that's, that's the whole answer here, right? You just take whatever it is that they're saying is a factor, and you multiply it by the other factor that you can figure out from the graph. And all of the factors you can figure out from the graph can be obtained just from the zeros, right? If it's at negative 1, it's x plus 1. If it was at positive 1, it would have been x minus 1. 
Okay, and I just wanted to point this one out because um, it's not done with long division and maybe it's a little bit confusing, but it's just a matter of multiplying by that extra factor term. Okay, and then the last thing that I want to point out is this one, and I'm not even going to go through all of the details on it. I just want to set it up. So here, you're still going to write down the remainder for whatever you get for the remainder, and whatever you get up there on the top is going to be the quotient. But I want to point this one out because you have to set it up a little bit differently. Um, it's tempting to set this one up in the following way, and this is incorrect, okay? You put the divisor as x plus 2, and then you just write out negative 2x cubed plus 5. And this would be incorrect because in order to get this matching term, um, this leading coefficient, you'd need to multiply by a negative 2x squared, and there's nowhere to put the negative 2x squared on the top. And so if you don't have anywhere to put it, then when you tried to, like, do the next step down, you would have a 5 and then minus an x squared, and everything would sort of not match up correctly. Okay? So what we need to do is, in fact, throw in um, all of the terms that are not appearing in here explicitly. So instead of this, right, what we would do is we'd say x plus 2, and then we would divide by negative 2, or I'm sorry, the... Um, dividend would be negative 2x cubed, and then plus 0x squared, because there's no x squared term, um, plus 0 times x, because there's no x terms in this, and then finally the last term would be plus 5. And um, I'm just going to do the first step so you can see why it's really important, right? So again, here we would need a negative 2x, um, or I'm sorry, a negative 2x squared, um, because an x times an x squared is going to give you an x cubed. And a uh, coefficient of 1 times a negative 2 is going to give you negative 2. And if you include this one here, then you're going to get 2 times negative 2, that's minus 4x squared. If we didn't include the 0x squared, we would have put a 5 here, and we can't just subtract those two, right? These terms have to match up. The x squared terms have to match up. So without saying any more, because it's um, at the 50-minute mark, um, I'm going to let you guys do this one on your homework, but just again, remember that the setup here, you have to include those extra zeros if they're missing. And if you don't do it, it's going to really turn into a big mess of um, things not lining up correctly for you. Okay, so that's all I have to say for today. Have a nice day, guys. Um, if you're worried about your grade, um, I'm going to send some emails sort of later out today. You can send me an email if you're concerned, and we can talk about it. But have a nice day, guys.